Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Wu Wei, Journey of the Changing Path by Grey Wolf Games. It plays two to five players, or if you're playing the Emperor level, meaning the more advanced one versus many level, it is three to six players. The game takes roughly about 30 to an hour to play and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game Wu Wei, you're going to be playing as a student and as its master or their master. And you are going to be going along and gathering your different cards, different types of animal cards from each of the different masters and turning your student into a master student. As you do that, you're going to be able to use these cards and chi, these little guys here, uh, to uh, travel across the land and reach the different temples in order to get those cards. After the fifth card, your student becomes a master and the master and the student will both return to the middle area of the game board and the master will train the student because the student is now ready for the full experience. That's just a simple game mode, but there are additional game modes, and one of them includes a one versus many style play where one player plays as the Emperor. Will you be able to align your chi and choose your path correctly in Wu Wei? Find out now as I explain how the game is played and the basic setup, and of course my review. Setting up Wu Wei, Journey of the Changing Path, is very simple. You'll take out the game board and put it out for all players to see. And then based on the rules, you're going to set up the palaces, the temples, and the towns. You'll also be placing down the location tiles, and everything starts off face down, and then we'll get flipped face up to create this ever constantly changing board for each time you play the game. You're also then going to take the masters, the dice with the plus signs on them that are black, and put them on each of their respective uh, temples, and then you're going to additionally place your students, the players who are playing the game, based on their color in the middle of the game board. There's a north, south, east, and west location which you cannot travel on that dictates what side of the board is what. And you're also going to get three different game boards, the palace, uh, the uh, town board, or the train board, I should say, and of course the uh, key board. And you'll be utilizing those based on when you move and where you move across the map. Each player is additionally going to receive a certain number of key, one for every single type of element, and additional, based on the number of players and in their order, key of the chosen element that the game starts with. You'll take each of the five different decks of the different colors uh, for the different types of masters, and you'll set them aside within reach of all players, the bags of key, and any other components such as things like walls or emperor dice and set them aside. And then you're basically ready to play the game. Playing the game Wu Wei is very simple, and yes there are three different ways to play, I'm just going to explain the intermediate, the basic mode of play, but there are additional tokens and items that you will use as you progress in gameplay and different stylization as well. On your turn, there are four things you'll have to consider. The first is when you meditate. You have to check to see if any of your characters can't move, and if they can't, you'll have to make one of your characters suffer in some way. Maybe your master is going to be dishonored, or maybe your student is going to lose a card and no longer become a master. Uh, and if that is not a problem, which normally it will not be, you'll at least be able to move one character, then you'll progress to the move phase. When you move, you can move up to three spaces, but you always have to at least move one, because if you can't, you're going to have to become dishonored in some way. And when when you move, you can move across the octagonal spaces from left to right, up and down, and of course you can move onto these square spaces. The only rule is you cannot move from a square space to a uh, adjacent square space. So basically anything that touches uh, each other is what you can move along. And additionally, and finally, you cannot move on the northwest, east, and south locations on the game board. All of your students start in the middle of the game, and so when you move, you just simply move those three spaces and you'll end your movement. Then you're going to align with nature. Depending on where your student is going to land, or your master, you are going to gather chi, and then you're going to perform one of the three board actions. If you land on a town, that is going to change the element of uh, ki or chi that you are going to be utilizing when you're able to, um, basically when you're able to manifest your chi. Uh, you can move rapidly, so when you use your chi of the corresponding type that is located on the game board based on what it is, whatever the circle is, you can move one extra space for each one you spend. You can spend three to destroy an adjacent wall, or you can spend three to activate an animal power. Animal powers are gathered when your student reaches a master. You'll choose one of these guys, you'll take it into your hand, and then you can use it by spending three. Now, of course, you can also lose these cards, and you can only use them once. They're like one-shot type cards. 
um, and that's basically what happens. Additionally, like I said, if you land on a town, you'll change your specific chi location. If you land on a, a temple, then you're going to be moving this temple tracker up one space to the right. And if it ever hits that winter space, you'll turn your little sun marker into a moon. The first player will turn their marker into a moon as well. And that will signify that something's going to happen at the end of the round when all players have taken at least one turn and it's got back to the first player, which I'll explain in a second as well. And then finally, if you land on one of the palaces, the little triangles here, you're going to switch this to the specific uh, location, whether it be north, south, east, or west, or any location. And then you get to place a wall down based on the direction. So in the case of getting to place something in the west, you could take one of these walls and place it in a western hexagonal space. After you've aligned with nature, basically gained your chi, and of course move the board here, then you're going to finish by developing a discipline. When a student and a master share a space, they can receive a training card of that master's type, and they can choose only one and only one for each. So the basic idea of the game is using your student to move around to meet each of the different masters in the game, get a card from each of them, bring your student back, bring your master back, and then you win the game. Now, like I said, there's one additional thing in the game, and that is called the gathering. Basically, when the square symbol reaches the winter, like I said, and those suns turn to moons and that round ends, there's going to be a gathering, and the gathering works like this. You'll take your chi of the chosen type based on the circle board, and then you're going to hold it in your hand secretly, and you'll select a certain number, and then you're going to reveal. Whoever has the highest amount is the person who is going to be able to select who the next first player is for the next round, and in addition, each player is going to give away their chi, regardless of whether they were first or not, to any player that they so choose. So you're giving away resources in hopes of getting to go first. You don't have to spend any, and if you do hit a tie, then the first player will get to decide who wins that tie. And it's a good way of distributing the resources and allowing players to decide whether they want to keep the status quo or whether they'd like to change it up a bit and let somebody else begin. And that's basically the idea of the game. You'll check to see if you can move. If you can move, you will move to a location, otherwise you'll become dishonored. Then after you move to a location, you will interact, interact with the board, gaining chi, and then moving these markers on the different game boards. And then finally, you're going to see if your student is next to a master, and if so, you'll get one of their cards. Get all five different cards, bring your student and master back to the middle, and you win the game. A couple things to note. One thing is that whenever this little square marker is on the board on a specific type of terrain type, you cannot move on that terrain type. Whenever the circle is on a space on the board, that is the only type of chi that you can use when manifesting to do a special action or card action. And whenever you land on one of these palace spaces, the little triangles, you'll place it on that specific location and place a wall out. Students can never be on the same space as another student. Masters can never be on the same space as another master. And the only way that that is changed is if a student becomes a master from turning their plus, uh, their minus sign, I should say they're all minuses to begin the game off with. Um, if they turn their, their minus sign into a plus sign, when reaching the last master that they need in order to get that final card, in which case they go to a plus sign and it's okay, but only for that turn. Once they move off that space, that's it. Now they have to go back to the middle of the board without touching each other, and movement can be distributed between the student or slash student master and the master. And that is the game Wu Wei, Journey of the Changing Path. Okay, let's talk about it. All right, so before we start with my review, just really quick, I wanna note that there are three different game modes. And the original beginning and immediate game mode is going to be a more straightforward, how do you play, what do you do, and a race style game. And then of course, as you progressively get more and more developed into the game, you'll try out the next game mode, and finally the final one, which is the Emperor one, which is kind of the uh, one versus many style game, where one player gets to play as uh, the Emperor. Now, uh, in the game, your objective for the base game, which is mainly what I'm going to talk about here, is you're trying to get the quickest path to get to all the masters, make your student become a student master, and get back to the middle with your master as well. And you'll be utilizing cards, and cards will be needing chi in order to activate them. Each of the cards have a different function, whether it be to move through a wall that normally would block your movement, or maybe to move to one of the yin yangs, the yin or the yang space. Uh, additionally, maybe it can take you to one of the temples or palaces based on the color that you so choose, and all of them require three chi. You'll also be using on your turn um, extra chi to make additional movement, to break other walls, and of course to activate that animal power which I discussed with you already. 
and you're going to be gathering chi based on the spaces that you go. So each space you go, based on the color, as long as it's in a hexagonal space, you will gather that chi and hopefully utilize it. You can also turn chi into other chi. You can spend two of one type to make it into one of another. And you can always do that. So you're going to be utilizing that, that a lot whenever you're going to be trying to determine who's first player or whenever you want to manifest chi to make certain actions take place. Like I said, this is a racing style game. And when I first gathered this game and set it all up and began it, I did not expect a racing game. I was thinking this was gonna be more of a tactical strategy. I mean, it is tactics in a sense, but I wasn't expecting that you go around the board to each of the different locations and come back to the middle based on how it was designed. But in fact, that's what it does. You will be basically moving your character along the game board, avoiding spaces and paths that you cannot travel across because maybe there's a character there or because maybe there is a space there that has been blocked by one of the game boards. Perhaps you don't have enough movement to get to a certain space nor enough chi to make that happen. And you'll have to choose different locations in order to gather what you need, chi, or to get across certain areas that are currently blocked based on the hexagonal path board and get to those masters. Each of the turns is rather simple and straightforward as to how it works. You never ever don't want to move a character and there are certain kind of times where players can be absolutely dreadful and block your path, thusly dishonoring your student or your master and suffering some serious pain. The student will become demastered and have to get rid of one of their cards, whereas the, um, <laughs> the master will be dishonored as well and you'll be taking your little piece uh, here and you'll be placing it on their space and moving that master back and then having to get that, that piece back to get back to the board So it's gonna cost you rounds every round is beneficial in this game to you Everybody has the same path that they can start off moving with but nobody can move in the same space Due to the rules that makes the ever-changing path different this game is not necessarily meant to be aggressive But there is aggressive tactics that you can utilize in the game in order to manipulate the path that your opponents move on It does a great job with the theme you do feel like you are a student moving along to reach each of the different masters and their temples, gathering their cards, learning their techniques and skills, then your master will then feel like you're ready enough to begin training and you'll both move back to the middle of the game board to begin your final training session. And it works very well in that regard. Another thing to note, the quality and production of this game is high. It's very high. It's excellent. All the pieces are beautiful. Everything that they did um, in this game, they did not need to do as far as components go. They, they went the extra mile. These pieces here, all it is is a flipped up and down, minus and plus. You're not going to need the sides. It just references the type of character that you are, like blue is the dragon. But they are allowing you to have this nice, beautiful feel. It feels great to touch this piece pieces, to move them around the game board. Your characters feel great, and it does work wonders. All the bags here are high quality canvas bags, just like our game Moonshell. They went above and beyond. I know the price of these guys so I know that they did not have to but they chose to do something and that's wonderful. The game board is always different, always changing and you're always going to have a different game based on where all the different hexagonal pieces are, where the palace are, the temples and the towns. Each of the town, uh, each of the different three locations, these square spaces, are going to reference some type of por portion on uh, the different boards here. One will involve what type of chi you use, one will involve what type of spaces you cannot go on and then when you can place walls. And that, that being said, it's beautiful too. The illustrations, the artwork is all solid, all very excellent. It feels good to look at. Uh, the board is a very, very ever-present board. If somebody walks by this game and they see it, they're gonna wanna take a look at it and, and check it out because of how elegant they designed this thing. Even the board itself has the double thickness and has the cutouts to place the pieces in. They just did a really, really good job with this game above and beyond. Um, some might say overproduced, and for me, I love the way this game was overproduced because everything is still utilized. I'm not a big fan of things that are overproduced that are not used, but as long as you are using it throughout the game consistently, make it as beautiful and as wonderful as possible, and that is what they did with this thing here. The three game modes as well. The starting mode is pretty basic. It's pretty simple. You're not going to utilize all the cards that you get. You're never going to get enough chi that you want. Uh, sometimes it's going to feel easy for one player as compared to a compared to another based on just where the square moves and how it changes along the board and uh, that's just going to be how it is. It's basically a learning, a teaching method of the game which it does a fairly good job of doing but you're gonna know when somebody's about to win based on how far they are along the board and whether you can place walls or not. Speaking of that in this game mode, when you place walls on in the rulebook, it specifies six different spaces. Like for the west, you have these six spaces here and that these are kind of crossed with both northwest and, or, uh, yeah, northwest and 
the southwest, but I don't actually know if you can place walls in the in-between tiles, the ones that are connected to the middle of the board, because based on the illustration, it seems to show just the spaces represented, but not actually where the walls can be placed. I imagine that in-between it still counts as southwest and northwest and southeast and northeast, but it doesn't specifically say. I played it that way because I felt it was more engaging and players have to destroy those walls and get to those specific areas. And also because one of the game rules states that if one of your characters is blocked in the middle, only in this specific circumstance can they destroy a wall for free to get a character out instead of suffering some type of penalty. Uh, but it's something they could probably fix in the rules. But otherwise, the game rules were really, really simple and easy to understand. And the modes improve. You start utilizing these Emperor dice. You're going to start using mod modals, different changes in the gameplay as well. And it brings different types of tactics and styles and strategies to the game of Wu Wei. If you like a game that's art stylized, beautiful quality components, and a racing style game, that's basically what it is, this tactical racing with kind of uh, pitfalls and blunders that you can follow along the way, and you want something that can change a little bit and has different styles and categories of different play, then I would suggest you play the game. Now, if you're not looking for something like this, because it doesn't necessarily look like the same style game as what you'd expect when you when you set it up to when you play it, it might be a little bit of a shock. You might, oh, I didn't know that was the style of game, but overall, this is a fun game. Uh, another thing to note too is you're probably not going to utilize all the cards that you get. Sometimes they might not seem like they're, in, they're of worth or have almost no use whatsoever, but that's not really the point of the cards. You're not necessarily supposed to use them if you do not need to use them. The main idea is those are objective cards. You need to gather them so that you can utilize them, uh, utilize your student to become a master to get back to the middle of the board. And if you can use those cards, they're of benefit to you. Sometimes you might want to break a wall. Sometimes you might want to move through a wall. And that's going to depend whether or not that maybe somebody's next to you and maybe you do not want to break the wall and you want to get through that wall because they can't get through that wall as well. Maybe you want to move the game board so that it blocks a certain position off from one space to another. Now the winter spaces are blocked. Thusly, blue is not going to be able to get through this area because you cannot go through blue on this time, in which case they're going to have to go all the way around the game board, which will cost them more actions, thusly reducing the value of their turn. Reducing value of turns is key in this game. Anyway, if you like this game, and this game sounds interesting to you, if you like beautifully produced games with a really nice Asian style to them, I suggest you take a look at Wu Wei Journey of the Changing Path. Great Wolf Games did a beautiful job with this game, and I am excited to see the next game they produce, or next games, because if they keep up this style of quality, I'm going to want to pick up all of them. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Wu Wei. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up this game. You can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, release blog posts every week. We've got Kickstarter updates, we have giveaways, and uh, some other fun stuff, as well as, of course, our ads. You can click on those to help us out and make sure that somebody else can get a chance to look at their games. And if you want, you can check out our live stream. It's every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST, except, or sorry, Sunday. No, no Wednesdays, Wednesdays anymore, it's Sundays at 6.30 p.m. PST, except this Sunday, we're doing a bonus stream at 5.30 on YouTube, and then follow up with our Facebook slash Twitch stream at 6.30. So you can see us play Mercurial again, shorter version of the game with less players, and uh, if you want to check that out, you can. That'll be on Kickstarter as well. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to following the changing of the paths with you next time.